Greetings, everyone. I am Cadet Ashwarya Chhabra, and I am here to introduce you all to the second chapter under health and hygiene, that is personal and food hygiene. So the outline of the chapter will be part one, personal hygiene, and part two will be the food hygiene portion. Personal and food hygiene are necessary to preserve and improve the health of the individual and of the community as a whole. Personal hygiene involves all aspects of the health of an individual. Responsibility for the maintenance of personal health therefore lies with the individual. Every person must remain in perfect physical, mental and social health only then can he serve the community and the country well? Maintenance of personal hygiene is very important in preventing diseases. It deals with the practices that help in the maintenance and promotion of a person's health. Personal hygiene helps the, in the following. Number one, to maintain a good and clean physique. Number two, to maintain good muscle strength. Number three, to maintain clean mouth and teeth. Fourth, to maintain resistance to prevent information. So basically what they mean is that maintenance of personal hygiene is very, very important to be healthy, to prevent diseases, to have a good physical health, right? So you have to be a very clean and you should uh, maintain a good muscle strength, a, a clean mouth, clean teeth, everything. Right? Next. Main components are number one, sleep. Two, bathing. Three, eating and drinking. Fourth, care and cleanliness of skin, hair and teeth. And fifth is exercise. Sleep. Sleep means the periodical rest of both body and mind, and it is extremely essential for a healthy body. The amount of sleep one requires varies with individual age. The average requirement of sleep is about seven to eight hours a day. Sleep. Sleep is something we all neglect and we do not take it seriously. Please take it seriously. Okay, you don't have to be very lazy, but seven to eight hours of sleep a day is very important clear second is bathing keeping the skin clean and in healthy condition is essential for good health a bath with a mild soap with warm water in winters and cool water in summers are essential for body cleaning while bathing all parts of the body, including folds in the skin, must be cleaned well. After the bath, the body must be dried properly, including the folds in the skin as well, as wetness or dampness will lead to cuts or fungal infection. I think that's very self-explanatory. We should um, keep ourselves clean. We should have a good bath every day, right? Uh, bath with warm water in winters and cool water in summers and then dry ourselves properly right okay then is eating and drinking properly cooked food with its full nutrient value is beneficial for health eat slowly and chew well do not swallow hastily drink plenty of water between meals and avoid strenuous exercise after a heavy meal okay so the thing is that you all should have a good diet it should be full of nutrient value. It should be very healthy. I am not saying um, that you should stop eating any junk food or something. We should not eat any junk food, but it's okay if you wish to. However, it has to be balanced, right? Eat some more healthy food to compensate, right? So basically what they mean is, Eat slowly and chew well. No need to hurry up. Do not swallow very hastily. Drink plenty of water between meals and avoid strenuous exercise after heavy. Right? Fine. Okay. Next. Care and cleanliness of the skin, hair, and teeth. 
our skin keeps on secreting sweat and hence it is necessary to keep it clean through bathing and by removing dust and dirt regular changing and cleaning of uh, clothing is essential to keep the body fit digestive and other disorders take place when decayed teeth and unhealthy gums lead to giving foul smell in the mouth teeth should be regularly brushed after the last meal at night and early in the morning in sufficient vitamin vitamins c and d are the cause of dental decay insufficient okay okay so now what they saying is that you should again um keep yourself clean because our skin keeps on secreting sweat so you should bathe daily okay after exercise bath you should have a good warm or cool according to the season a good bath you should have and regular changing and cleaning of clothing is essential to keep the body fit so basically keep your skin hair and teeth clean care for them okay next exercise which we all do not do organized games and physical exercise are necessary for proper development of the body and mind okay i don't think i need to explain this we've been explain this uh, since childhood but still we don't follow but you should ideally you should um, exercise daily for keeping your body fit and healthy and actually to stay happy also you need to be healthy right now now we will talk about water supply and its purification so in this uh, we will talk about sources of water supply and purification of water all right pure water is a necessity sources of water supply number 1 is rain water most of the fresh water on earth comes from rains however most of this water is not fit for consumption due to impurities of the atmosphere second is surface water surface water is found mainly in rivers and streams uh, or lakes this water is unfit for human consumption without treatment due to discharge of various types of waste, waste into it third is underground streams bore wells are a good source of potable water supply however even these need to be protected from contamination okay next um sorry next is purification of water safe drinking water comes only from an authorized source purification provides good and safe water by eliminating the suspended matter harmful salts in solution bad taste or smell undesirable colors and germs the following methods are used for water purification number 1 is boiling and filtering water untreated or treated potable water from any unreliable source must be boiled at 100 degrees for 30 minutes cooled and then filtered only then it will be fit for consumption okay so whenever you have to like i don't think we all uh, need to but uh, any time in life you need to purify water it is very necessary that you should know it boiling and filtering water is a method for water purification so untreated or treated treated potable water from any unreliable source must be boiled at 100 degrees for 30 minutes cooled and then filtered only then you can drink it clear second is clarification this is the removal of suspended matter through filtration by passing it through filter beds of gravel and sand or through properly sterilized filters okay third is sterilization this is done by using chlorine gas or bleaching powder fourth is pinking during cholera epidemic uh, potassium permanganate should be used for pinking of walls okay 
Fifth is precipitation. This is done by adding alum or some similar chemical to water, which makes all impurities accumulate at the bottom and leaves pure water. This water is then passed through a filter. Okay. So these are five methods which we can use for water purification. Okay. Now we move on to the second part of the chapter that is food hygiene. Okay. This is also very important. Food is a potential source of infection and is liable to contamination by microorganisms at any point during its journey from the producer to the consumer, right? Prevention of contamination of food has to be observed from the production to handling, distribution, and serving. The following are the important components of food hygiene. We are going to talk about all of them briefly. Uh, so number one is milk hygiene. Second is meat hygiene. Third is fish hygiene. Then is eggs hygiene, fruits and vegetables hygiene, hygiene of eating places and hygiene of food handlers. All of these uh, things are very important. So we will read about them now. Number one is milk hygiene. Milk is an efficient vehicle for many diseased organisms. Contamination of milk may be due to infected animal, human handler, or environmental factors. Anything can be there due to anything infection can spread in the milk, right? Following aspects should be ensured to obtain clean and safe milk. Number one, the animal and, and its surroundings should be healthy and clean. The animal should be properly washed before mulching. Second is milk handler should be free from any communicable disease. Third is milk vessels should be totally clean, sanitized and kept covered. Fourth is water supply must be safe. Fifth is pasteurization. It is the heating of milk to such temperature and for such periods of time as are required to destroy any pathogens without destruction for of nutritive value. It does not alter taste. Temperature 130, uh, 130 degrees Celsius and time 1 to 2 seconds. So all of these things are very important to keep a check on for obtaining a clean and healthy milk. Okay, so the animals should be clean. The animal surroundings should be healthy and clean. The milk handler should be free from any diseases. Milk vessels should be totally clean, sanitized, and kept covered. Water supply must be safe. Pasteurization is a very important thing. It is the heating of milk through which the pathogens are destroyed and the uh, nutritive value is not destroyed. Clear? So the temperature for pasteurization is, I've written here, which is 130 degrees Celsius. And the time is one to two seconds, right? Next is meat hygiene. Meat hygiene. The word or the word meat includes various tissues of animal origin. The diseases which may be transmitted through meat are tapeworm infestation and bacterial infection like anthrax, tuberculosis, or food poisoning. Okay. The animal intended for slaughter must be subjected to proper antemortem and postmortem inspection. Good meat should neither be pale pink nor deep purple, nor should it be uh, nor should it be slimy. Good meat should be elastic to touch and should have agreeable color. So these are the conditions for a good meat. Okay. Because there are certain diseases which can be transmitted through meat, which are tapeworm, infestation, bacterial infection, like anthrax, tuberculosis, food poisoning, anything like that. Okay. So this is also very important. Next is fish hygiene. Fish for human consumption should be fresh. In fresh fish, the gills are bright red and the eyes are clear and prominent. Consumption of contaminated fish may give rise to fish poisoning. 
okay so again it is uh, the same thing the fish should not be contaminated in the fresh fish the gills are bright red and the eyes are clear and prominent so you just check on the fish if you are um, like going to consume a fish you should be check it if it's fresh it, uh, it its gills should be bright red and the eyes should be clear and prominent Okay, otherwise fish poisoning can happen. Okay, next is egg hygiene. Though the majority of freshly laid eggs are sterile, sterile inside, the egg shell may become contaminated by fecal matter from the head. The egg must be properly washed before cooking. Okay, again the same thing. Eggs should be properly washed. They should not be contaminated because, you know, the hen uh, may excrete some fecal matter which can, which can contaminate the eggshell. Otherwise, the uh, freshly laid eggs are very sterile inside. So, but because of the fecal matter, they may be contaminated. So, you need to check on it. Okay. So, the egg must be properly washed before cooking. Just wash the eggs. Okay. Next, fruits and vegetables hygiene. The fruits and vegetables are an important source for the spread of pathogenic organisms, protozoan, and helminths. Fruits and vegetables consumed raw must be washed well before. I guess that's we all do. That's something we all do, right? We uh, wash the fruits and vegetables, and that is something we have to continue always. We should wash the fruits and vegetables um, before consuming. Okay. For consuming them raw, like we usually consume the fruits raw. So, yes, you should wash them. Same goes with the vegetables, even though you have to cook it, wash it before that. Okay. Next is hygiene of eating places. Eating places should not be located near filthy places, open drains, animal sheds, manures, soakage pits, and other such places. So basically, eating places should not be located near filthy places, dirty places. Okay. Second is floors should be easy to clean and should be preferably tiled. Okay. Uh, hygiene of eating places, the uh, floors should be preferably tiled or they should be very clean, okay? Third, rooms for storage of food should be well ventilated, insect and rat proof, and should have adequate lighting. So, rooms for storage of food should be well ventilated, and they should not have any insects or rats, obviously, because there is food inside the room. So, it is very obvious that there should be no insects or rodents, right? Next is perishable and non-perishable items should be kept separately, okay? Fifth is furniture should be strong and easy to clean, right? The furniture on which the food is kept should be very strong and should be easy to clean so that there is high, the, so that the hygiene is maintained easily. Then is refuse should be collected in covered bins and removed regularly, right? There should be dustbins there. Any waste food is something refuse should be go should go in the dustbin. All right. Water supply should be independent, adequate, and safe. Proper place for cleaning of utensils should be provided, right? Utensils should be very clean. Right in a in, um, in for the hygiene of eating places, utensils should be very clean. It's very important, right? So these are the certain things which we need to keep in mind, right? Uh, regarding hygiene of eating places. Clear? I think it was all very easy till now. Um. We okay. So next is hygiene of food handlers. Number one is complete medical examination of food handlers must be done at the time of employment, right? So this is something that should be looked after by the employers 
all the medical staff all the uh, sorry all the food handlers should have um, should have a good healthy report complete medical examination should be held second is regular health checkup should be done third is uh, education of food handlers should be regularly educated on health and hygiene aspects so they should know they should be aware that health and hygiene is very very important right they should know that they have to handle the food very nicely properly so that hygiene is maintained right fourth is they should be constantly reminded about hand washing trimming of nails covering of hair wearing of overalls and covering mouth while coughing and sneezing during cooking so this is also extremely important they should be uh, they should have trim nails they should wash their hands regularly uh, they should wash their hands like uh, whenever they have to work with food right they have to cover their hair they should be wearing overalls they should cover their mouth while coughing sneezing this is very important and it is uh, now to it is essential nowadays because of the pandemic coughing and sneezing is very uh, is something everyone has to prevent right so covering mouth while coughing and sneezing is important during cooking so coming to the end of the chapter personal and food are two sides of a coin which must be ensured together for best results these are simple steps which if taken regularly and correctly can be beneficial to both individuals and community as investing of time and effort in them can lead to saving of lives right so please 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 keep well take care of yourself and i hope uh, you learn something from this presentation you all know now what all you have to do you have to um, take care of yourself you have to bathe daily you have to clean your hair skin teeth everything you have to maintain hygienic conditions all around yourself right so thank you so much this is all for the second chapter thank you this was kedeshwarya signing off now